Hello, everybody. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me on this fun Friday. I am Deborah Harrison with Simply Sweet and Ink Designs. And as you hop on, say hello. If you come back and watch the replay, just give me a quick hello and let me know where you're watching me from. Hello, Tina. Happy Friday to you as well. All right. So uh, as I told you last week, I was going to share with you a really fun project with the Perennial Postage Bundle. And I love, love, love using dies in a different way, okay, other than just the labels. I mean, they're wonderful for that, but any time that we can use them in different ways, it's more value for our money, plus two, it just adds some really fun elements to our projects. So before I get into that, one, I want to let you know I have been very, very busy designing for some upcoming classes, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you're on my email list. One of them is the one that y'all always ask me about, and that is my mystery craft box. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it's using the Cutest Cows Bundle. Is that a yay? I hope that y'all like that because this Cutest Cows Bundle is really, really cute. So uh, my email list does get first opportunity. They get early registration, and same when they sell out, they sell out. So they do sell out every time. So make sure that you're on my email list to be able to get early access for it because it is cute. I've already ordered all the pillow gift items. I am super excited to design for it and I can't wait for y'all to see it. All right. So let's see. Was there anything else I wanted to tell you? Anyway, a lot of stuff coming down the line, but that was the main thing I wanted to let you know about uh, right now. All right. So let me go ahead and tell you who our share prize winner was. And I don't think I've seen her on just yet, but it's Margaret Duncan. Margaret, you're going to get some happy mail of the beautiful paper butterfly accent, the pack of that, and also last week's card that I made. Margaret, I don't think I have an email for you, and I could not see that I have mailed you something before. Maybe I have, and I just can't find your mailing address. So I'm going to message you. So if you do get a message from me, it is legit. It's from me. I have some happy mail to send to you. So congratulations. And thank you so much for sharing last week's video. All right. So if you share this week's video, you can have a chance to uh, be put into the drawing to receive a Stampin' Up mouse pad. I love mine. I've got mine over here in the corner that I use all the time. I love the round shape because it's that's how I move my mouse is in circular shapes. So go ahead, comment, share. Now, I know if you're on my Facebook group, you're not going to have a share button. So you'll need to be over on my Simply Sweet in Ink Designs business page on Facebook in order to get that share button. If you're on YouTube, pretty simple. You got a share button there for you. All right. And if you are on YouTube and you are stopping by, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever I have a new video. All right. All right. So as I said, last week we made, actually, this is the card that we made last week that I'm going to be sending to Margaret. Beautiful card. Really, really simple. I just really let the uh, perennial lavender designer series paper be the showcase of the card along with those really beautiful paper butterfly accents. But today... We're going to keep playing with this bundle, but we're going to use the dies. And like I said, I love using dies in a different way. And so we're going to make this cute little mailbox. And as you can see, I used one of the larger dies for my canopy. I used some of the little dies for my little flag. And yes, it does go up and down. So as you uh, need treats, as you fill it with treats, you can indicate that it's full. But when it's empty and you need more treats, you can put your flag down to say, hey, refill me. And then here in the front, I added a little, a, a really small little postage die cut label so that you could open it. Now, I'm going to give you some options here on the inside, but I don't want to jump ahead to that just yet. Because as you see, I have it covered. It doesn't have to be, though. But I'll explain that in a moment. All right. So let me go ahead and I'm going to get my little quick reference guide up in the corner here for you. Now, I will tell you, this is probably one you want to make sure if you want to recreate this, it would really be a good idea to have the project sheet. And in order to get my project sheet, you do need to be on my email list. I try to keep it to two pages. This time it was three. I'm sorry. Well, two full pages, I guess. One and a half if you count. But anyway, so if you're not on my email list, go over to my blog, simplysweetinkdesigns.com. Click on the connect with me and there's an option for you to sign up for my email list. That way you can get my weekly project sheets as well as upcoming uh, or notifications of upcoming events. All right. So let's go on ahead and let's get into today's project. It's not too complex. The template is a little bit. 
we're going to need our scoreboard to be able to get started. Now, the first thing is we are going to take a piece of crumb cake cardstock. It's a pretty big piece. And this measures eight and a quarter by nine and a half. And we're going to do some scoring. So here along the long side, which is the nine and a half inch side, we're going to score. Let me move that light. That's kind of bugging me a little bit. Oh, we get a new light. Yay, all kinds of lights today. Sorry about that. We're going to have a little bit of reflection. Actually, I'm going to cover this up just a little bit so I can get out of that reflective zone. All right. So our first score mark on the long side is going to be at two and one quarter inches. Then we're going to move over to four and a half. We're going to skip this green one. That's for my next measurement. Then the next one is at six and three quarters, and then finally at nine inches. So what it's going to do is it's going to leave me a little half inch tab. I'm going to rotate it. Now, I don't have a green tab, but it is another measurement on the short side, which is your eight and one quarter inch side. Again, at two and a quarter. Now we need the green marker, which is five and a half. And then we have seven and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead, now that I've done my score marks, I'm going to... You can look at my measurements. So those are the measurements that I did along the score lines on the long and the short side. Now, you're not going to be able to see a lot of this, right? So what I did is I have a template here for you. And so at the very top, we have a little narrow half inch band. Then we have another half inch band right here along the right side. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my template so you can see everything. And here's that little half inch line. So what I did is I cut off from the first panel, that little half inch on panels two, three, and four, I got rid of it, all right? So I'm gonna bring in my big boy scissors today, and I am going to cut up these score lines. Now, if you prefer, you can use your paper trimmer if you want a really straight edge. So we're gonna cut off, and then I'm just gonna ankle cut here. All right, so now you can see we're on the panel one. Now I'm gonna do a similar thing here along the right edge near panel four. There is a little half inch mark here. And so I'm gonna snip off the top and the bottom, but I'm gonna leave the center section. So I'm gonna take, cut that. I'm gonna angle cut. I'm gonna angle cut that and I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna cut off that little half inch section. All right, so this is where we're at, right? It's looking very much like our panel. Now I'm gonna snip up the bottom score lines, just like we would when we're doing a box. All right, so here we've got our bottom panels, right? Now, what we're gonna do is we have panels one and two, we're gonna leave them alone. We're gonna cut out four. We don't want four anymore. And we need, and we're going to leave four. So when you're done, your whole completed template should have a little half inch tab here, a half inch tab here, and then tab or panels one, two, and four. And we are going to snip up the score lines. Not yet on panel one. So we're keeping panel one. We're going to get rid of panel three right here. So I'm just going to snip up those score lines. And now I'm going to take my smaller my little paper snips i'm going to come in here on panel three which is this panel and we don't need that anymore and i'm going to cut it out easier said than done now you may want to use a paper trimmer for this might be a little bit easier to get in there and do that there we go all right so that is our base template for this project for the box now we're going to burnish the score lines take our trusty little bone folder. Get some nice crisp edges, including that little half inch mark. Do the same thing along the bottom. And then we're gonna do the same thing along the top for those three panels. All right, so now that everything, oops, we have one more right there. Let's see, where's my new glue? Got a brand new glue for today's video. My other one was barely hanging on last week. All right, so I'm gonna add some glue right here. Now you can use tear and tape if you wish. 
So I'm going to fold this over so my half inch shows. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to fold my other side over so that it lines up. And then we get a nice little square tube right here, just like when you were making a box. All right. So before we put the bottom of our box together, which is the back, I want to take a look at this section that is our half inch tab. That's going to be the front. That's going to be the panel that pulls down right here for our box, all right? So we wanna make sure that the tab is at the top. Now, before I do that, actually, I'm, I'm going ahead and do that. So that's gonna be my top. I'm gonna go on ahead while I have this open is I'm just gonna take a little circle punch and I'm gonna just snip out little finger holes for those two little side panels that are part of my front. So once you determine your half inch tab, that's your front, then you will know which of these tabs that you need that you can punch a little semicircle on. All right, so we're just gonna go on ahead. I'm going to close that up so that I have it all together. Now I know this is the front, so now I know this one's gonna be the back. So here I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. Go on ahead and let's close up the back. And let's see, go on ahead and do this. And then I'm going to finish off with that last little piece. All right, so I have made my box right here. There's my front, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some designer series paper. And so I took some of the perennial postage designer series paper. We're going to take two pieces that measure here on the sides, on my side pieces that measure two by three inches. And I'm just going to glue them onto each side. You can choose whatever colors you like. I chose some that kind of have like a wheat look. And then I saved my gingham piece for the front. So we're going to rotate that over. We're going to do the same thing for the other side. Now I'm going to close my box. And then this piece that goes on the front, the gingham is two by two. Gonna put that right there on the front. All right, I'm gonna go on ahead while I have this out and have my front ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and add my little pull tab. So what I did is I took, let me go ahead and grab these out of the package so they're a little bit easier to see when they're not in the sleeve. There is this really, really tiny one right here. So I grabbed that one, die cut it out, and then what I did, and you hardly can see it, but there's kind of like a little what I call a tag hole. So I went ahead and I, ta a pot, I die cut out a tag hole in crumb cake. I did my little pool in the Highland Heather. And so I am going to grab my tiny little tag thing and I'm going to glue it on top of my little pool. Let's see, let's go on ahead. Put that on there. And then I'm going to pop it up with dimensional so I have a way to be able to grip it. So we're just going to put that up here. And in a little bit, I'm going to come back and I'm going to bling it up with some of those really pretty purple gems. All right, so now we have the box. We've got this set up. Now we're going to do the canopy part. So for the canopy part, I took, I can't remember. Oh, it was. It was the largest die in the die set. And what I did is I cut out a piece of designer series paper. Now this piece for the canopy designer series paper is three and a half by four and three quarters. And I'm just going to glue it right here on top of my die cut panel. Now the next part is where we're going to need a little bit of patience. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue that, press it down really, really well. And then I'm going to take a bone folder or you can take the side of your table, but I'm going to take my bone folder and we're going to want to gently start trying to curve this so that it will actually make the bend for our canopy. You don't want to do, you don't want to force this, otherwise you'll end up with a crease 
in your cardstock and it won't look as pretty. So just keep working it until I feel like I've got a good canopy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take tear and tape and I'm gonna add a little bit right here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit right here. I'm not going all the way to the edge because this is a little bit of an overlap. Now, before I take off my adhesive strips and actually adhere it, I wanna do a couple of things. One, I wanna work on my flag, make sure that I get it positioned correctly. So let's go ahead and work on the flag, set the box aside, let's set the canopy aside. Let's grab those pieces for our flag. So we're, in order to stabilize the flag, because this could end up being, very, this could wear out very, very easily. So we're gonna double everything up. So what I'm gonna do is I have two pieces of crumb cake cardstock. They each measure a half an inch by three inches long. We're gonna glue them together. Hello, Karen, hello, Jeanne. Thanks, guys. Hey, Cindy. All right, so we're gonna glue these two together. And then we're, that's gonna help stabilize it, make it nice and firm for us. Then I die cut out two more of the postage labels from the die set. And so I am going to add just a little bit of glue towards the top of my pole, glue one on one side. Now, as you know, a flag, this flag is going to be weighted more on one side than the other. Now that we have that, I'm gonna add glue to the other side because we wanna also stabilize our flag. So we're going to put the other flag right on top, lining up those little pieces, the little edges. And I'm going to have to hold this for a second to make sure they adhere well. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to take a little hole punch. And I'm talking itty bitty bitty, okay? Like, do you see how tiny that little hole is? I mean, it is so, so tiny, all right? So I am going to punch a hole, I would say about a half an inch up. And then I'm going to take these round and square brads. I very rarely use them, but when I need them, I need them, right? And this is the time I needed them. So I'm going to take, you can take a round one, you can take a square one. They come in white, they come in black. I'm going to take the white one and I'm going to poke it through. And then I want this to actually hook up to my canopy here. So I'm going to kind of determine where I need this to be, but I want it over my tear and tape. So I need to make sure that it's over my tear and tape. So I would say roughly maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe three quarters by three quarters from the corner. And then we're going to take and we're going to punch it all the way through. And then we're going to splay out those metal pins. And now my canopy is ready to go. All right, I'm gonna give it another good little bend because it does put a lot of pressure on this canopy when I put it on. All right, let's go ahead and put this on to finish up our box. And then we'll add it up a little bit of bling to it. So I'm gonna remove the paper strips off my tear and tape. I may be risking this trying to do both at one time, but we shall see. And then I'm just going to line them up Press down, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side, and press down. All right, I think I need to open my box a little bit, reach in here, and put a little more pressure. Now, you may have to keep kind of curving your box if you find that it's not holding well. Another thing, if you find that it's not holding well, you can also use some um, hot glue gun. That might help too. All right, there we go. All right, so remember I was going to come back and tell you, and I will bling it up, I promise. Remember I was going to come back and tell you about these flaps. So you have a choice, okay? So you can stick your treats inside. You can close the flaps like this. That way you know they're in there. And then you can close up your little, your, your um, lid right here, okay? If though you feel like that doesn't really look like a mailbox. So what you can do is you can actually take some glue if you want and just adhere them inside. And then that way you have it 
like a little mailbox. So when you open it, it's all nice and open. So you have options there. I just wanted you to be able to choose which one you wanted to do. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put that back. Last thing I want to do is I'm going to take my purple gems here. These are so pretty. You got three different colors of purple you can choose from. And we are going to bling up. And I can't remember what I used. Oh, I did use the large ones. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit right here. Like there's a little knob there on my pull. And then I'm going to also, too, I'm going to add some here, some smaller ones on my post so that it looks like it's like nails in my post holding up my sign. Now, if you have a cute little stamp or something, you could cute put like a little message like hello. That would be so cute to put on there. All right, so that is the project for today. Now, I did want to tell you the other, well, maybe about a month ago or maybe a couple weeks ago, I had asked you to share with me, share with me which you would like to see for the February Sweet Creations Club. Between the painted lavender and the perennial postage, the votes every which way. All right, y'all made some really valid points, and I ended up choosing the perennial postage. However, I did want to play a little bit with my painted lavender. So I did ink it up this weekend and I wanted to share a card with you uh, that I made for a swap that's coming up at, for on stage in March. I would love to know who of you are going to on stage. I know there are some demonstrators on here. I would love to know who is going to be at on stage in Houston. So if you would shout out, let me know so that I can be sure and look out for you when I'm there. All right. So this is the card that I'm going to make for the swap at on stage. And just really, really beautiful. Like I said, added a little bit of the per, uh, painted lavender there to be able to, and then just added the little butterflies. And the sentiment actually comes from the perennial postage. Those two just really pair together so beautifully. All right, so for February, as I said, I it, the, but the focus bundle is the perennial postage bundle and making five beautiful projects using the beautiful... Uh, perennial lavender designer series paper and the uh, the paper butterflies just a beautiful set of designer series paper and little accents and then also to making a cute little treat box which looks like a letter so if you are interested in my sweet creations club it is a monthly subscription for $39 a month it does come get shipped to you and includes about $20 in consumable products it includes like all the uh, cardstock supplies that you need for the projects. You'll just need to stamp and glue them all together. And sometimes you have some little bit of die cutting that you need to do as well. All right. So let me see. I'm going to look real quick to see if there are any questions. Thanks guys so much for joining me. I hope that you love the project. Uh, I had a lot of fun designing it and I really cannot wait for you to see all the other stuff that I have coming up for you. All right, guys, so y'all take care. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed weekend. Have a creative weekend. Enjoy. Hope you get some uh, good weather. Our weather has that cold front came through, and we are back to some nice sunny days. All right, guys, y'all take care, and we'll see you next. Oh, I don't want to forget and share with you. Next Friday, come back. Make sure you come back. I want to share with you a really fun project. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way. I can't believe I forgot to almost share this with you. I am so excited. Uh, I do not know if my friend Terry Brummagen is on here, but Terry encouraged me to play with the Trusty Tools Designer Series paper. And I am so thankful she did. She kind of gave me that nudge because I've had so much fun playing with it. And I'm going to share some really awesome projects uh, that I'll share with you next Friday that I did uh, with the Trusty Tools. Uh, tools designer series paper. Now this is actually a card, believe it or not. It looks like a treat box, but it's not. And so you can actually fold this up for mailing and it's cute. It's like a little workbench. And I know out in our garage, my husband has his little workbench. And so this is like really super fun project for Father's Day, or you can change up your sentiment. So to, to be able to fold it, you're going to lift up that little panel there, your bench, you're going to fold it over, then you're going to bend back one of the side walls. And that is how you mail it. All right. So I cannot wait to share with you how to make this project and some of the other things, the projects that I have designed with this really fun paper that you can get during celebration with a $50 order. All right, guys, y'all take care. Now we will see you next Friday. All right. Take care. Bye.